I'm starting my Thanksgiving preparations today. Usually I go outside and try to gather some greenery and stuff, and that's the first thing I do. Uh, well, the first thing I do is clean my house. So we did that yesterday. Matt helped me, and we got everything cleaned up nice and everything put away and everything spick and span for the company that's coming. But then I typically go outside and try to find some leaves and maybe some, you know, dried weeds or whatever it is, some branches, and I put them around the house. It's been raining yesterday and today, so I'm not going to do that. And then I have plenty of, of pumpkins I can sit around, winter squash and pumpkins. And then also Matt made me the wonderful little photo holders. I'm going to put those around everywhere. And Granny had a beautiful, beautiful flower arrangement that someone sent her. Very nice, sweet lady. And so she sent it with me this morning when I went down at her house to get some things. And she sent it back with me and said, let's put that on one of the tables. It's so pretty. So we'll put that on one of the tables. So I don't think I'm going to go outside like I usually do since it's wet and damp and then I have a, a lot of other things that I'm going to use. But there is a lot of cooking I need to get done today. The first thing I'm working on, I've got one of my, one of my Long Island cheese pumpkins. This is the first time we ever really grew them. And I've got one of them cut up. It's really beautiful orange on the inside. Smells good, looks like a pumpkin, but people have told me they really love them. So I've got one of them cooked up. I'm gonna get the seeds out of it and put it in the oven, and I'm gonna make a pumpkin pie, maybe two, but at least one. Granny usually makes our pumpkin pies, but she said she just wasn't feeling up to it. So I had took her two pumpkins last week, I guess, and she said, I just never felt like putting them up, and why don't you take them back and make the pies? So, so I said, sure, I'll make the pies. Um, I think I shared in a recent video, she told the ladies up at the cancer center where she's been having her treatment, she told them it wouldn't be Thanksgiving without pumpkin pie. So I'm going to make the pumpkin pies for the first time. I've made pumpkin pies before, but it'd be the first time ever that I've made them instead of granny for Thanksgiving. So I need to get those in the oven so that they can start, start cooking and then I can be doing some other things. I, I made me a list this morning. And so these are the things that Matt and I and the girls will be responsible for. Of course, we'll do the turkey. We have it thawing. We'll do the sweet potatoes. I want to do those today. I do the first step of them, and then I do the rest of it tomorrow, so the day of. Matt will do the deer ham tonight. He'll put that on before we go to bed. And it just smells up the whole house. You wake up in the morning, and it smells so good. It smells so good. And then we'll do the dressing. I want to make that today. I usually let Matt and Corey usually take care of that. It's Matt's family recipe. It's cornbread dressing. So I might go ahead. I've got some onion and celery over here. I'll go ahead and chop those up for them. And then also I've got we put eggs in it. They do. So I've got some eggs. I'm going to put them on to boil. We're going to use some of the corn that we put in the freezer this year. Probably just do that in the morning. Maybe lay out some bags of it tonight and then just cook it in the morning. To cook our corn, we really just reheat it with butter, put some butter in it, and just kind of gently heat it, and that's all we do, and some salt. And then I want to make an orange tater cake. I always make one, but then I'm just wondering if we'll have enough without them, uh, without making it enough desserts with the pumpkin pie. Corey's going to make a, a different kind of pumpkin pie. My sister-in-law Kim's going to make a pecan pie, and then also her famous coconut cake. So I'm just debating. I hadn't decided yet if I'm going to do that one or not. And then the rolls. But I'm ahead of the game this year, so I froze my rolls ahead of time. So they're frozen, and all I have to do is get them out in the morning and thaw them up. Usually I have to get up and, and do the whole process on the day of. So still a lot to do today, but I'm going to, I think it's going to, I think we're going to get it done. I need to go ahead and get the cornbread too. I could go ahead and do that. I already have that ready. have all the ingredients ready and then just let Matt and Corey actually put it together. So now I'm going to finish up on the pumpkin and get it in the oven. Now that I've got this one pumpkin ready to go into the oven, I'm thinking I should take this opportunity while I'm doing this to actually maybe at least do another one of my small ones and that way, I mean since I'm going through the process and that'll be one less I have to worry about later on, save myself some time later on down the road even though I'm quite busy today. But I think I'll go try to find another small pumpkin. Oh, I've got one right there. That one's so pretty though. I don't know. Hmm. I have to go in search of one. Okay, found me another little one. I think, I'm not sure, but I think this was also one of the Long Island 
cheese ones. Time to put them in the oven. Now that I've got the pumpkins in the oven, I'm going to start on my celery. Okay, I've got the all the celery. More important than that, I got reinforcements. Matt's back here. He's going to. He's gonna help me. I'm throwing stuff on the floor, but he's gonna help me, help me with some stuff. All my, I didn't have much celery left over from what I bought, but I'm gonna pop this in the freezer so we can use it next time we make a big pot of soup or chicken and dumplings or anything like that. And then we'll go on to the onion. Okay, I was using my onion chopper here. I normally don't use it if I'm just doing one onion, but when I'm in a hurry or need a lot of onions like for the dressing, I usually pull it out. There's Matt's onion and his celery that he'll need. Yep, yeah, he's gonna make his cornbread to go with it. And that means I can start on my sweet potatoes, I think. I'll clean up my mess a little bit first. Right. Corey's joined us now in the kitchen. She's telling, I said, I'm cold. She said, stick your fingers in my hot tea. Don't, it would hurt you. It too. would hurt, yeah. So I'm ready to, Matt's working on his dressing, the rest of it. I've got me some water. Got my sweet potatoes. I've got two butternut squash I'm gonna put with the sweet potatoes. So I'm gonna start peeling them and then chopping them up for the first step of the sweet potatoes. Now I have a video that I can link to shows you what I'm doing, shows you the whole recipe. So hey, if you're interested in that, candied sweet potatoes, I'll link to that. And I don't think we have a video about Matt's dressing, but I do have a blog post, so I'll link to that. And maybe while, when he puts it all together, we'll show you all the ingredients. Corey's got her some tea and I think, what are you about to do? Make a pie? I need to make a pie. Make a pie. Okay, got the sweet potatoes and butternuts. I ended up getting one more butternut and a few more sweet potatoes than what I started out with just to make sure my pot was filled. I've got water in it. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt and then I'm gonna cook them on the top of the stove just until they're barely tender. And then I'm gonna mix them with the, the sweet sauce that goes on them and then put them in the refrigerator and I'll actually bake them and roast them tomorrow. So Corey and Matt's got all their dressing ingredients assembled. They're ready to put it together. They can tell you what they're what they're doing, what they're putting in it. Corey says it's starving or did to death. It smells so good. It does smell good. But we'll put a link in the description below to a, where I wrote out the recipe on the blind pig and the acorn. But Matt can tell you a little bit about it, where he learned how to make it and all that. I guess I learned this from Miss Cindy, and it was her dad's, which was my grandpa's recipe, and she years and years ago showed me how to do it and I've just been doing it ever since and then of course I showed her and she's kind of took it over so that's real good she can do it and I can watch and I can eat it <laughs> yeah. so get with it <clears throat> I'm gonna crumble this stuff first so it's got a whole cake of cornbread in it we just crumble that whole thing up and it's got six pieces of toast that I made earlier. And we kind of just, just kind of tear it up in it. And as we, as we put the rest of the ingredients in and work it in, it kind of just, those little tour pieces just kind of get worked into the rest of the dressing and you don't even really know they're there. It just makes feeling. This cornbread is hot. Yeah. <laughs> A little bit hard to hold on to because it's hot. 
good if your hands are cold, though. Mm -hmm. And there's actually in this recipe specific amounts of stuff, but no, once again, I never go by none of that. And I just, I guess other people that's better cooks can go by recipes, but I can't. I just do it by how it looks and how it tastes. And if it needs something, I put it in it. And you know, that's kind of how we all do here. But it usually turns out good, don't it? Mm hmm. I sure think it does. Help you tear them. Them's a little bit limber. I should have let them go a little longer. But they'll be alright. It's alright. They'll still be good. Okay, so now the next. Uh, that whole pan full over in there. How hot is this pan? It ain't too bad. Next thing to go in is a stick of butter. <clears throat> this is really, really rich stuff, so. Get me a special. It's a good thing we only eat it once or twice a year. It is quite rich. That's what makes it so good. Don't want to leave any butter out. No butter left behind. <laughs> that is right. And whatever, whatever other moisture it needs will be chicken broth. So don't press that mess in. All the, all the stuff? Yeah, it's all eggs and celery and onions. onions. <clears throat> and then how peppery, peppery do you like it? Need some sage too. I don't know if that's that. I hope we have some. We may have to get the boss lady in here to find that. Sage? Cool. I like to measure stuff in the palm of my hand. And get a better gauge of it that way. And this is just however much you want. How much would you like? Just however much you usually put in. Here's, here's the thing if you want to shake it out. I used to hunt with a feller that liked just as much as you'd put in this, it would turn it green. And that's what he liked. That's a little much to suit me, but and some salt. And you can go back as you're making this, we'll taste it a little bit along and as if it needs something we'll we will add it. You want to measure this stuff or eyeball it? I usually do the mustard in a spoon. Okay. This one's almost empty, so. Yeah, that's nice right there. And that's no fun at all. We'll do this one. You need a two heaping tablespoons of this, right? Two big tablespoons, and we'll start there. It may take more. Yeah, we usually add more mustard. And then a little bit of cider vinegar. And a little bit is just however much you like. Sometimes I'll go back as we're tasting this and add more. And I know it's going to need some of this. Oh, yeah. Do you want to knead it or would you like me to? I can do it. Okay. I'm just rolling up my shirt sleeves. Then just get in there with your hands and fingers and work it all together. And taste it as you go. This does make a very delicious dressing. It does. Another variation to it is you can add a pound of cooked sausage to it. Be good. And I've never actually done that. You can also add oysters in it. I don't know if I would really like that or not. Oh, I would. I love oysters, but I've never done that either. But this, I don't know where this, I don't know where my grandpa came up with this. He may have learned it somewhere in his travels somewhere, but it's always been pretty good. Oh, yeah. I do wish we knew where he learned it from, though, if he learned it or if he made it up. I don't know. He, I always assumed he made it up. Well, he might have, or he may have picked it up somewhere. I just don't know. He traveled a lot and he liked to cook. So 
And that was Miss Cindy's daddy? Yeah. He, he died when I was real young, so I just don't know that tale. Is it a little dry? Yeah, it is. And I always make it, I'll air on the side of wet. As opposed to dry? As opposed to dry, just simply because we're actually going to put it in this pan here and cover it up with tin foil and put it in the refrigerator overnight and some of that liquid will evaporate. So I like it. I like to make it pretty wet and it's if it's to me it's better if it's moist when you cook it than it is to come out dry. So I did not worry about it. Okay. We should taste it because if <clears throat> we want to add any more mustard or any more vinegar, that will make it wet too. That is correct. And it's already not too wet, but it's wet. You taste and then we'll add something to it if it needs it and then I'll taste. That way we're not going through so many spoons. Oh, that's a good idea. Sorry. Tried not to touch you there. put very much vinegar in it. Do you think it needs it? Yeah. I would add mustard, vinegar, and a little bit of salt. Okay. Does it need any uh, black pepper? Maybe a little, Because yeah. I didn't put a whole lot of that in mm -hmm. it either. It's got enough salt. Yeah. I didn't put a little more black pepper in it too. Yeah. This time I'm just gonna shake it. Just dust it. I didn't even put a little of this in it too. Yeah, they probably need some of that. Just a couple of cleans. Uh, do you want me to taste it? You want to taste it? You can taste it off your fingers. <laughs> I could, but then I'd have to stick my fingers and either wash them or... Because I don't want to contaminate my fingers. Is it getting close now? Yeah. That's a lot better. I think it needs more mustard. I think I'm thrown off by the onions because I know, me too. They're not this onion is not very strong at all. They're really, really good onions that somebody sent us. And I'm used to it just being so overwhelmingly strong with just white onions that's kind of throwing me. Yeah. But it's good. Yeah, oh yeah. I mean, I don't think it'd be fine just like it is, but yeah, I think it would be. If you want to put some more in it, we will. I think it's probably all right how it is. I mean, whatever you think. Okay. I definitely think adding the vinegar helped. You want to put a little more in it? I mean, all those little shots ain't much. I just put no. capping my finger over it. Let's put a little in it. Let's put a little bit more mustard in it, too. Okay. <laughs> Mad scientist with the dressing. Yeah. 
Now see what you can do with that. You're gonna have to wash some spoons. I know we're using all our spoons, huh? I like to pat it down and make it fruity before I taste it. Gotta get the perfect bite with everything in it. I think that's it. Good deal. Oh, well, now we're going to just stick her on in. <clears throat> yeah, you want to do it? Go ahead. Just while my hands are already dirty. Okay. I think it's almost better raw than it is cooked. Yeah, I know. <laughs> All right. That's a pan full. It is, yeah. But that'll be good. Okay, it's later in the day, but we're still continuing to press forward with our Thanksgiving plans. I had to ship some cookbooks, so I'll make a quick run to the post office. Corey and Matt thankfully got the dressing done. So my pumpkins that I had in the oven, my little pumpkins, they've been cool ones. So now I'm ready to, to get the uh, pulp out of them. I'm just gonna use my hands here. And Corey is gonna help me. She's gonna get all the pie ingredients together. And I think I am just gonna make one pie since Corey's making the other kind of pumpkin pie. My sister-in-law's bringing two desserts. So I think I'm just gonna go with one pumpkin pie, but I'm gonna freeze the rest of the rest of the pumpkin here. When I put my pumpkin up like this, I don't mind that it's a little, the texture of it, but some people do, and they, you could, if you, if that bothers you and you want it really smooth, like what you would buy in a can, like pumpkin puree, you could uh, run it through your food processor. I don't ever do that, though. I did read a really interesting um, thread this week, thinking about Thanksgiving. I guess everybody's talking about pumpkin pies, and um, it was someone given the directions on how to make sure that your pie turns out like like a creamy they were saying it wasn't curdled well it was interesting as soon as i seen the the cake they said that wasn't done exactly right i thought well that's what granny's cake always or pies always look like so i must like it not done right and then when i read some of the comments that's what some people were saying like you know lol well, i must i like mine curdled because that's the texture i like Anyway, but they were selling you how to get that really, really creamy texture. But if you don't, if you don't use puree that's really silky smooth already, I guess it would be hard to hard to get. Just personal preference, though, like everything else in life. I really enjoy days like this where we can all be together in the kitchen. You know, Corey's here because Austin's gone hunting and Katie's here. She's been in and out. She's been working, doing some new, new exciting things in her shop in the basement. And of course this year, Matt gets to be with us too. I really, really enjoy these days like this. Now, you may not though. Some people on some of my videos when Corey and me, and me are both in the kitchen or me and Matt, they say it's very distracting. They don't like it. So I apologize, but if that's how you feel, but we don't have a studio, a dedicated studio. We really are just showing our lives. So I couldn't do all this uh, without Corey helping me, even if she does make a little noise. <laughs> it's just part of it. If you've ever been in a kitchen together with family cooking, that's just the things that happen. The sounds of life, I guess, that's what I call them. Those are the sounds I like, though. I know there's some uh, YouTubers or con content creators that really do get so big that they can have like a dedicated studio that's not in their house and it's all quiet and, you know, perfectly lit and all those kind of things. I'm definitely not there, but even if I was at that level, I don't think that's something that I would enjoy. I love just sharing my day-to-day -day life, like I said, and everything that goes along with it, even the um, noises of other people, whether it's Katie hammering in the basement or, you know, people talking in the background. That's just, to me, makes it, I mean, I, I couldn't do that. I couldn't do both. In other words, I couldn't live my normal life and then also be, you know, spend eight hours a day alone in a studio with a film crew or something like that. Okay, I ended up with a, a lot here. I think there's a little piece I missed. So now I'm going to get out enough for the pie. 
I'll go over the recipe with you. It's Granny's recipe that she uses, but it's really, really a common one. It may be even the one that comes off the back of a can of pumpkin, but it's one that she's always made. Let me clean my hands up. Corey's helping me by getting it all ready for me, and I sure am glad, because I'm getting tired, I'm getting tired out. Oh yeah. Corey got everything together for me. I had to go in the basement to find my cream, though. I could have swore I brought some up here, but apparently I didn't. So, this is the recipe. I'm actually, uh, Granny usually makes two pies, so she's got it written down for two, but I halved it so that I'm just gonna make the one. So it's one cup, well, I'm just gonna tell you the doubled in case you wanna make two, that might be easier. Four cups of pumpkin, um, which I'm gonna just use two, but anyway, four eggs, one and one half cup sugar, two large cans cream, one teaspoon salt, two teaspoon of cinnamon, one teaspoon of ginger, one half teaspoon of cloves. And then we're gonna just mix all that together, put it in an unbaked pie shell. Granny had already bought one of the Pillsbury, the rollout kind that comes in a tube. So I've already put it in my glass plate here. Um, and then we're gonna bake it at 350, or first you're gonna bake it at 425 for 15 minutes, and then at 350 for 35 minutes. You have to keep a check on it in your oven. Um, see what else something else i was going to say about it oh i was going to say i have it on my blog so i'll link to the recipe in the description so you can go you don't have to worry about writing it down if you want to try it so first we're going to get some of the pumpkin here two cups of pumpkin corey got me two eggs i wonder if i should beat those first corey get me my little would you get me with my whisk over there i'll just kind of beat them in the corner there where they're at Sorry, I didn't beat them first. That's okay. I just thought it might be easier to break them up a little bit. Probably just use this to do the whole, do it all. Yeah. Actually. Mm. Okay, what is this, my salt? Mm-hmm. None, so, none of it come out. None of it come out. I'm glad you're standing here. I probably set it back down and wouldn't have any. All the spices. Mm. Smells like Thanksgiving, Corey. And Christmas to me. Yeah, and Christmas. There's the sugar. Smells so good. I bet that filling just on its own would taste good. Mmm, I bet so. Where did Granny get this recipe? I was saying, I bet she might have got it off the back of a can of pumpkin or something. She's made it for as long, my whole life, but I bet it might have come off of, so it might be, I don't know where she got it, but it's a good one. It's real runny until you bake it and then it sets up, but it's real, real runny to begin with. Okay, we've got it all mixed up. Since it is so runny, I've set my pie plate just on a little baking sheet so that it's just easier to put in and out of the oven since it is so runny. I'll show you how runny it is. Really runny. Pretty good. Yeah. And you could use, if you don't have pumpkin, of course you can buy store-bought pumpkin. You could use butternut squash in this. You could use candy roast or be really good. You could even use like Kushaw squash if you wanted to. Looks pretty good, don't it, Corey? Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll put it in the oven. One more thing marked off our list. Yeah. We're almost done with our preparation. The turkey's one of the last things. I do my turkey very simply. I learned about it, I don't know, four or five years ago on a website. I'll link to it in the description below so you can go, go read it. It's super, super simple, and we really love it, and I've just been doing it like that ever, ever since I first found the website that talked about it. And so tonight, what we've done is we've just removed all the stuff that's inside. We've patted it dry, patted the turkey dry, and we're going to put salt all over. A pretty heavy layer of salt. I mean, not to, you know, not like where it needs to be that deep, but we're going to sprinkle salt all over it. And then we're going to put it in the refrigerator, and we're just going to let it sit overnight. It's just going to sit like that. And then in the morning, we'll get it out, and we'll let it come to room temperature, and then we'll roast it. So I'll link to that website and it, it gives you all the background of why they this person why she was a chef why she did it like that and what she thought about it and all that kind of stuff anyway Corey's going to be my salt sprinkler let's start with the back side and then we'll flip it over okay. 
And really what the salt does, of course it does add some flavor, but it kind of sucks out the moisture. So, and I uncovered, it's uncovered in the fridge overnight. So that's good back there, Corey, you can come up here. So it kind of lets the skin get crispy. And it does season the meat some too. And then in the morning when we get it out, I rub butter all over it, and that's it. That's all we do. Now you can put, like I've in years past, I've done like you put stuff inside, lemons and uh, aromatics, rosemary and things like that. That's really good too. It's just once I tried the simp this simple method, we just it just turned out so well. It was so juicy and just cooked to perfection that we just keep doing it year after year. And it's simple. We like simple, don't we, Corey? Mm -hmm. All about the simplicity, no doubt. That's good up there. Just get some on the legs, and that'll be good. Am not going too thick. Yeah, this? maybe a little. Bit. Okay. It's, <laughs> it's okay. gonna be one we'll salty burn, y'all. No, be fine. Okay, looks great. Today, cold air has moved in, so it's got turned off cold, hadn't it? Today, it was it's much colder through the day than it was even when we got up this morning. One of those kind of days. So uh, we have a refrigerator in the basement, but we've just got so much stuff in them that we've, we're using the Forerunner as a refrigerator. So we've just got some things like some drinks and things like that out there. So we'll make room for the turkey though in one of the fridges in here. But now this job is complete. The only thing left is Matt's got to put the deer roast on. Okay, the last thing we're gonna do this evening is get the deer ham ready. I cook it usually, uh, Overnight, while we're in the bed, it stays on a, a low heat in the oven on about 220 degrees in a cast iron uh, pot. And it cooks all night, and then when we wake up in the morning, you can smell it all over the house, and it smells real good. And it's pretty simple. Uh, I learned this from Daddy. I think he learned it from somebody 40 years ago down where we used to deer hunt. Somebody told him about it, and he tried it and liked it, and then I just kind of picked it up from him. And all it is is just the hind quarters, the whole cleaned hind quarters of a deer. And it's good and clean, good and red. And I've always used just a, a little bit of water in it just for the, uh, just to have some liquid. And it'll, it'll actually steam a little bit in there as well. But to, tonight I'm going to use some leftover chicken stock that we used there and I'm going to cook it in it. I've never done that, but I think it'd be good. And it don't take much, about a about a half inch in the bottom of the pot's plenty. Because as it cooks it will it will make its own juice. Alright and on top of that I'm gonna put a whole stick of butter melted with some garlic on it goes over top of it. And then usually at this point I'll season the meat real good because I'm going to cover it with bacon, completely cover it. And then as it cooks, that bacon juice or bacon grease kind of drips down over it and drips down into the liquid that's in the bottom of the pan. And I usually season the meat now so that it don't, because I'm going to cover it up with the bacon in other words. And you can season it with about anything you like, I guess. I always just use salt and pepper and a little oregano, a little parsley. And again, no measurements or nothing, they're just eyeballing. And I'll, I'll usually season the top of the bacon just a little bit more just because it looks pretty in the pot. And then I'll drizzle just a little bit of honey on it, not much, just enough to kind of sweeten it just a little bit. Kind of spill that just a little bit, but that's all right. Won't hurt nothing. And then on top of that, I'll just drape some 
some bacon. I used to used to use toothpicks and pin it on there, but I don't think you really need to. This pot's sized as to which it can't really go nowhere. It just sits right there and it'll it'll kind of crisp on top of it as it cooks during the night. So it's not going to go anywhere, but all of the all that good bacon fat that's in it will drizzle down over that meat and make it real good. And it's usually a pretty big hit. And I'll season the top of it just a little bit, just because it looks good. And that's pretty much it. It goes in the oven, 220 degrees. We'll put it in around nine o'clock or so and it'll cook till five or six in the morning and it's completely done. Good and tender, fall apart and good and juicy. And it's real easy to do. Thanksgiving morning and we've been up doing various things to get ready get ready for our big day We've got the turkey out. Uh, it's almost ready to go in the roaster. Matt just brought some corn up from the freezer We're going to make some corn. We were going to lay it out last night and we just forgot but it'll I think we'll still have plenty of time We've got the rolls over here rising Still got a lot of things to do though. I'm having, I think Matt's already ate. What did you eat, Matt? Scrambled egg, scram egg sandwich. Scrambled egg sandwich. He made it himself. I was doing some computer stuff I had to do. So now I'm gonna have my breakfast. I've got some, just some chicken broth, some grapes, and some cheese. I'm eating very light because I know we're gonna be eating really big here in a few hours. So starting off to be a wonderful Thanksgiving already. So I've started baking the rolls. Still got to make the sweet potatoes or bake them. They're already done. And the dressing. Turkey's gone. Corn's gone. And we've straightened up everything, tried to clean up our mess. Now I'm going to start decorating the tables. Matt's brought my, up a table from the basement. And I'm going to I'm going to start decorating it. I'll have to decide which pictures I'm going to put in here. And I'm going to put some around the food, at the desserts, not necessarily the food. And then which ones I'm going to put in the in the living room. So that's what I'm going to do now. And I'll show you what I come up with. I think it turned out very nice. I love all the pictures. These are some sweet little turkeys that someone sent Granny and she made me bring them home with me yesterday when she sent the flowers and wanted me to use them too. I think people will really enjoy looking at the photos. Here's the, the back side of them. There's Miss Cindy. We've been crying a little bit over Miss Cindy this morning, but we've also had some happiness. We've got so much to be thankful for. And on this table, these were the beautiful, beautiful flowers a sweet lady sent Granny that she had sent home with me yesterday. She said those will be perfect for a centerpiece, and she was right. And then I just put the photos around them. There's Pap and eating his turkey carcass and Granny and the family. So I just surrounded it with photos. Then over here on the buffets, usually where we put the desserts, we've got a few things here already, more coming. And then I surrounded the them with photos too. I had lost, I thought I had lost the one of Katie and her little, her little hat. That one right there is Katie. And then I was like, oh my goodness, did I not get it out? And I don't want to go through all those pictures, but Matt saved the day. He found where I had set it somewhere. So I think it turned out nice. People are really going to enjoy seeing the old photos. They may be like us though. There may be some tears. There's already been some tears from us, but Really nice ideal, and I'm glad I did it. I'm glad I seen it in the magazine last year. Almost time for people to start arriving. Matt's carving up the turkey. He's got his gravy. He's making his own gravy. He's got it going over here. I think we've got everything... I think we've got it all. If we ain't 
We'll just do without it. Yeah, if not, we'll just do without it. I think we've got everything though like we like we want it to be. Now we're just waiting on them to arrive. Of course, this year there's lots of things for us to be thankful for. We're so blessed beyond measure, beyond what we deserve. We're so grateful for all our blessings. But we're really especially grateful for Granny and that her treatments have done so very well. And she's just been a trooper through all of it. Earlier this week was her last treatment, and I took her and she got to, got to ring the bell. I'll share that moment with you. You happy? Yeah. We're celebrating today. So Tipper's buying my lunch. We're going to Chick-fil-A. Granny had her last radiation treatment. She's so happy to be done. She's done really well. And she loves Chick-fil-A. So we're going to pick her up some Chick-fil-A before we go home. So she's doing doing good, Granny is, but she's not feeling good today. So at the last minute, she's told me if it if it didn't hurt my feelings, she wouldn't come. And of course, I said no, it won't hurt our feelings at all. So she won't be with us today. That'll kind of be sad. But I will make sure to take her a big plate of food, and I know she'll enjoy that. And it's okay if she wants to wants to take it easy and rest a little bit, because she's certainly she's been amazing, hasn't she, Matt? Yes, she has. She has done so much better than any of us thought and through this whole ordeal. And, you know, it's not over yet either. So we really are thankful for all your prayers and um, and ask you to just keep praying for her. Keep praying for Granny. The scrapes. Oh, he did that on purpose. He don't even know what we're doing. Well, we survived Thanksgiving 2023. It was really, really good. We had a great day. Don't you think, girls? Yeah, we did. It was wonderful. Matt's over there in the back uh, cleaning up. He's washing some of the dishes. We've been putting up food and straightening up. Everybody's left and went home. <laughs> I've been eating again. Katie's been eating again. <laughs> yeah. The pictures were a big hit. Everybody loved them. Everybody loved looking at them and telling some stories, and, and they loved taking them home with them. I tried to get them to take the little holder too, but my sister-in-law, I think we just hit the camera. I think we did, uh, My sister-in-law said, no, Tipper, keep them and do this again next year. So, so we- You can't get no more pictures. <laughs> It was lots of fun, though. Yeah. Lots of fun. Even the little kids that um, didn't really understand, I think, like seeing their daddies. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, who is this? What yeah. kind of stuff? And seeing their grandpa and yeah. grandma and how yeah. they used to look and all that. So, wonderful fun. We're so thankful you come along with us to celebrate Thanksgiving this year, and we hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's a wrap. I'm out. Okay, now I need a thumbnail though. Come here, Katie. Matt, can you get in it? Or just stand in it somewhere? <laughs> Dad, what are you doing? Yes. You gotta get closer. You probably got something out of that. Alright. <laughs> Where's the hand drying towel, Katie?